My name is Julianne Cost, and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to discuss when you would want to use virtual copies in Lightroom and when you would want to use snapshots. Now, both of them have kind of their own unique properties, and there really are actually good reasons to use both of them. So, obviously, that's why we include both options. So let's start today with virtual copies. I'm going to tap the G key to go back to grid view, and you can see that I have this, this single image right here. Now, I might want to experiment with this image. And really, when you're experimenting, you can use either virtual copies or snapshots. But let's start with the virtual copies, and we'll see their benefits in just a minute. So how do you create a virtual copy? Well, the easiest way is to simply go up under the menu here, go to Photo, and then come down to Create Virtual Copy. And you can see that there's a keyboard shortcut, Command Apostrophe or Control Apostrophe on Windows. And what that does is it creates basically a secondary thumbnail in Lightroom. So Lightroom is kind of treating this as if there are now two separate files. But the benefit is Lightroom's only doing that in the database. It doesn't actually have to create or duplicate the file on your hard drive. So we're not taking up any more space by creating a virtual copy. But now what we can do is we can make changes to this. So let's tap the D key. That takes us over to the Develop module. And let's do something like convert it to grayscale, right, by tapping the V key. V is for black and white. All right, so now we've got basically two versions of this image. And I can see these two versions right down here in my film strip. We've got this version that's in color. And then we've got this version right here that's in black and white. And if I wanted to, I could continue on and create more and more versions. I can also go back and change things such as, let's go here to our metadata, and I could add a separate caption, a different caption. Here this caption was for the original image, but I'm going to change this to converted to black and white. Now, that might be kind of obvious in this instance, but there might be other instances where you actually want to add notes about what you've done to an image. So that's a great way to do it is to add in the caption. And what that'll also allow is when you go to other modules, we'll be able to see that information. So let's say, for example, maybe you're in a teaching environment and you want to use these two images and tell people what you've done. So we could go over to the slideshow module. Here I've got a bunch of information about the file, like what camera was used and all the settings. But up here at the top, you can see I have some custom text, and that custom text has the actual title. So how did I do that? Well, you can see that when I click on it here, under the um, ABC here, this custom text that we can add, it says caption. Of course, I could choose from all sorts of different things here, but that's how I'm getting the caption. That way, when I move to a different image, this first image, for example, we can see that it says that it is the original image in the caption. So that might be one reason to use the virtual copy. If we move over here to the print module, and we've got our layout style set to custom package, you can see that I can drag each one of these into a different cell, and Lightroom is treating them basically as separate images. So there's another advantage. You can actually print these. Well, I don't know if you'd want to print them like this. You could print them side by side, though, or however you design your layout. And you can do the same thing in the web module. And you could actually export these files, both as individual unique files using the export module. And you could even edit these both in Photoshop as separate unique files. If you went back here to the grid view in the library module and we said edit in Photoshop, Lightroom, if we had both of these images selected, Lightroom would send both of those images and actually render out two separate TIFF files or Photoshop files for you. But another super, super important reason to use virtual copies is when you're working with collections. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to delete this virtual copy for a minute. And I'm going to grab this original image, and I'm going to drag it into my black and white portfolio collection. And let's also drag it into my sepia portfolio collection. Now remember, these are not virtual copies that I'm dragging. I'm dragging the same original into both collections. So watch what happens. If I go to my black and white portfolio, and we scroll up here to our quick develop, and we just change the treatment to black and white, not only is it changing it in the black and white portfolio, but it's also going to change it in the sepia portfolio. That also means that if I went over to the Develop module, and I decided to go here to my Toning preset 
and make this a sepia toned image, guess what's going to happen if we go back over to the library module? Certainly it's now sepia in our sepia portfolio, but if we go back to the black and white portfolio, it is also changed to sepia because I'm only using that single thumbnail, that single reference to that file. If I were to create a virtual copy using the keyboard shortcut Command apostrophe or Control apostrophe on Windows, now I can remove kind of this original version here from this black and white portfolio by just selecting it and tapping the delete key. And then we could take this image and we could quickly go back to the develop module and take off that, that sepia tone. I'm just going to click on my reset preset here to reset that. We can go to auto black and white, come back to the library module, and now we see that in the black and white portfolio we have this virtual copy. I know it's a virtual copy because of the page curl right here. And when we go to the sepia portfolio, I still have my sepia version. So that's an excellent use of virtual copy. And if we take that one step further and you go down into Publish Services, if you wanted to publish an image in two different or with two different sets of instructions to two different locations, you're definitely going to want to use the virtual copies. All right. So my only issue with virtual copies is that sometimes it tends to clutter my work area. So if I don't have to make a virtual copy, I don't really want to. Instead, I'll use snapshots. So in, in the scenario that we just went through, obviously I'm going to need to make virtual copies. But if you have one image and you're just trying to make that image look its best, you don't really want a black and white version and a color version and some crazy psychedelic version. You just want the best version of that image then I would recommend that you use the snapshot. So let's see how that's done. All right, let's take a different image here. Um, we'll go ahead and grab this one looks fine. Uh, actually, let's use the same one because we've started with that. We'll go over to the develop module. I don't know, is that going to be too confusing? I hope it's not too confusing that I'm using this. I've used it as a virtual copy, but now in this image, I'm also going to create some snapshots. So here is my snapshot area right here. And when I make changes, so let's go ahead and make a big change. Let's use one of the Lightroom presets, and there are just some crazy ones that make huge changes like the yesteryear. All right, let's add one of those. So now we can see we've made a huge change to the image. In fact, the yesteryear too has a, a little vignette we can add as well. So once we get to a point that we like, we're thinking, hey, this is the best version of this image. I might want to come down here and take my snapshot. So you simply click on the plus icon and then we name it. We can call this one yesteryear so that we remember that we added that preset to it and then hit create. Now we can continue on and do additional things, but we can quickly get back to the yesteryear preset because I don't know about you, but sometimes my history gets super, super long. And so it's so it's so time consuming to go back through history and try to figure out exactly where it is that I want to be. Now that I've got this snapshot, my history can get as long as I want and I can quickly find where I am with the snapshot. So let's do this. We'll go um, back to black and white by tapping the V key, but I can see that this probably has a split tone applied to it. Yeah, it sure does. So let's take off the saturation there. And the other thing I'm going to do because I want to go ahead and kind of show you how to screen back an image. We're going to go to Tone Curve and I'm just going to set it to linear for a minute to get rid of all those extra points. And then if I just wanted to screen this back because maybe, maybe I'm doing a layout in Photoshop and I just want this to show up like at maybe 10% or something, watch, you can do that right here in Lightroom by just dragging up this point, right? And the further up I drag it, the lighter the image becomes. All right, so let's just drag it about to the midpoint here and we'll create another snapshot and we'll call this screen back. All right, so now we have two snapshots. We can quickly go back and forth between them. One has some creative license and one has this other special effect that we've added. Now, not only can Lightroom 
use these snapshots, but Photoshop can access these snapshots as well as long as you're working with smart objects. So how would I do that? Let's say that I want to edit this in Photoshop, but if I just choose to edit it, it's just going to open it up as a PSD or as a TIFF file. If I want to open it up as a smart object, then I would select to open the smart object in Photoshop. And the great thing is, is that because it's a smart object, what's really happening behind the scenes is Lightroom is handing off the raw file to Photoshop. And it's going to open it up here. You can see I've already got another file open. That's our layout file. And here is the smart object. And we can see it's a smart object because in our layers panel in Photoshop, we've got the little smart object icon. Now, if I tile these images, we can use our little document tile and I grab my move tool, we can move this smart object into this other document. Right now, then I probably don't need this other smart object open, so I can go ahead and close that. Might take a minute because the smart object, remember, is the full DNG file. All right, let's close that. We don't need to save it. And here is that imported smart object. Let's just make my layers a little bit more obvious here. Here is my smart object. And the great thing is, if I want to modify the contents of that smart object, if an art director came to me right now and said, ah, you know, I really wanted that, that crazy yesteryear version. You wouldn't have to go back to Lightroom and re-export. All I need to do is double click on the thumbnail for the smart object here in the layers panel. It brings up Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. And if we go to the snapshot area, here is my yesteryear preset. So now we can click OK and it's going to re apply those developed settings and show me the results. Now, if you don't like it, not a problem. I actually like the first version better, so I could always undo that and go right back to it by just using Command Z or Control Z on Windows. But my point here is that you've got the flexibility to make all these different kind of snapshots in time in Lightroom and then export them to a smart object to Photoshop and actually access those, um, those snapshots. One caveat, if we do go in here, let's say we go into um, Adobe Camera Raw and we decide to do something else. Like we decide that we're going to go to our tone curve and bring this down a bit to bring back some of our blacks. And then we're going to go back to the basic panel and we've decided to you know, increase exposure. And we do all these different things. Maybe we'll add a little bit of a sepia tone or some other color tone here because we're just experimenting. If we do this in Photoshop's Camera Raw, and then we click on the snapshot and we click to add a new snapshot, all right, and we'll call this blue um, tone and click OK. When we click OK, that snapshot has been saved in the embedded Photoshop file. So Lightroom is not going to be aware of that snapshot, right? Because if we go back to Lightroom, when Lightroom handed this file off to Photoshop as a smart object, it kind of lost touch with it. It said, take my file at this point in time and give it to Photoshop, but then I really have nothing to do with it. So if I was going to do that, if I was actually going to need to make additional snapshots, I wouldn't do it in Photoshop. I'd come back to Lightroom instead. And let me show you why. Because this is my main image library. This is my main catalog. This is where I keep track of all my images. So I, if I'm going to make this change, I want to make it permanent, right? I don't want it to just be in that one Photoshop file. So I'd come here and say, all right, let's change that tone curve. Let's go. And here it's quite convenient because I already have things like um, my auto black and white mix. And then I've already got all these tints set up. So I could go in here and make it orange or purple. In fact, I like purple better. So Anyway, you see that I can make all my changes here. Add my snapshot in Lightroom, purple tone, and hit Create. Now here's the tricky part that only you will know from watching this video. When we go back to Photoshop, obviously this isn't going to have the purple tone in it, right? Because I did that in Lightroom. And it won't even matter if I like save the information from the Lightroom database into the file. This file is totally separate, still not going to have the information. But the cool thing about one of these smart objects is you can replace the contents. So all we have to do is replace the contents with the one that I just changed in Lightroom, right? But there's one caveat. 
We have to go back to Lightroom for one minute, only because I'm working with a DNG file. I need to make sure that the information from the database is put into this file, right? Because it can't just be in the database. I need it in the file. So I'm going to go here under Metadata. So that means I have to go back to Grid View, right? I can't be in the Develop module. I have to be in the Library module. I'm going to go here to Metadata, and I'm going to say Update the DNG meta uh, preview and metadata. If I was just working with a raw file, I could just choose save metadata to file or I could turn on the um, catalog setting to automatically save the XMP files to your raw files. But because I'm working with DNG, I'm going to tell it to update the DNG preview and metadata. That's going to take the information from the Lightroom database and put it into this DNG file so that when I'm in Photoshop and I know this super secret going under Layer, coming down to Smart Objects, and replacing my contents, I can quickly find that newer version in Lightroom. And one of the things that I really like is the fact that in Photoshop, when you go from Lightroom to Photoshop and you bring over a Smart Object, you can see in the Layers panel that that Smart Object carries over the name. So if I wanted to find this image, all I need to do is look for the name 02805. 02805. Here's the image right here. Here's one of them. Yep, it's in my, nope, that's not the one I want. This is the one I want right here in the Iceland folder in Reykjavik. And all I'm going to do is tap the place key. And it's going to basically bring up Camera Raw because this is a new DNG file that's going to replace the old one. And look at that. I've got all of my snapshots, my purple tone, my screen back, and my yesteryear. So I can click OK, and it'll replace that smart object, and now I have additional snapshots to choose from. So again, my point here was, if you have multiple snapshots and you want to use those in Photoshop, just open that file as a smart object. And then when you double click the smart object, you can go back and forth and change your mind. If you're going to add additional snapshots, don't do it in Photoshop. Do it in Lightroom if that's your big Uber catalog because then you'll always have those additional snapshots. If you were to say create another layout next month and want to use that same image, you would have access to all of those snapshots. Okay, so that's the difference between you and you would want to use a virtual copy when you actually want Lightroom to treat one original as two so that you could have a black and white version and a color version and you could put that into separate collections and when you would want to use a snapshot. When you really just want that one image, you want to try to make it your best image, but you want a little bit of creative leniency in which image is actually the best one until you reach that final image that you're satisfied with. So it's also very helpful with snapshots because obviously they work well with Photoshop. So there's a good reason to use both of them. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Julianne Cost, and I hope to see you again on another episode of The Complete Picture. Thank you.